Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are, whenever you're watching this, this is Floating in Dreams. Today's video is going to be about my custom palette from June and the one that I will be selecting for July. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. Today's video is going to be all about my custom eyeshadow palette that I built myself for June. And in this video, we'll also be going down to the floor and build a new palette for July as well. So today's video is going to feature the swatches for the palette that I had going on and the looks that I created with it. And then I'm also going to be selecting the new sh uh, some new shades to be using this month. So I hope you would like to stay strap in for all of that goodness. Um, and in case you're new here, hi, my name is Maike. I live in the Netherlands. I love coming on here to chat about eyeshadow palettes, S's and Catrice reviews, and getting the use out of my makeup. And because I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, I deem myself a snow angel and if you'd like to join my snow angel club then hit the subscribe button down below because i'd love to join i'd love to have you join my little family on here custom eyeshadow palettes that definitely goes into my whole like i want to get more use out of my makeup this year i set myself the task to do a custom eyeshadow palette with my singles every single month and use it because i have so many pretty singles and because I'm always so focused on using eyeshadow palettes, I wasn't getting the use out of it. And now that I'm building myself these palettes, I mean, I also did a month dedicated to like cream shadows in May. I've been really loving playing around with it, doing my color stories. Not every single palette I built myself has been as successful so far, but I'm really loving it. And I really love the one that I created for June. So let me show you everything. So this is the palette that I built for June. And for June, I went with six shades and one of them was a matte and everything else were multi-chrome shimmers because uh, in May, I swatched out all of my multi-chromes and I was like, I just need to show you like what this palette has to offer. So I was like, you know what? I am going to dig in and really get the use out of some of these really, really fun multi-chrome shimmers and oh boy, did I have fun playing around with this? I put in Max Corduroy, that's the matte that you see here. And Max Corduroy ended up being the perfect transition shade for all of these. I mean, it's like a cooler brown, like cool neutral brown that if you put it next to warm tones, it's going to pull more warm toned. But if you pull the shades next to cooler tones, it's going to look more cool toned, which made it perfect with these shifty shades, because very often multi-chromes can shift from like cool, cooler tones to warmer tones. And I find it very difficult to find good shades with it that can really work with it. But I felt that Max Corduroy was perfect for going with these other shades. So yeah, of all the looks that I'm showing you today, in the crease, Max Corduroy. I also very often use it along the lash line and I used my 1999 Barra Cold Pencil Liner for a few of the looks as well, just to create some extra definition because I felt that some of the looks needed a bit more anchoring and then I like going in with a cold pencil. So yeah, Max Corduroy was the perfect shade for tying everything together and not make the shadow like float around on my eyelid. Then we have JD Glow's Unexpected and this shade was something I purchased after Hannah Louise post and just kept raving about it. And I really, really like it. I really do. I just, I'm not a big fan of the formula. It's a very creamy texture and I like it. I really like the way this sits on my skin. I like the way it looks. It's just that I felt it, I didn't have as much time to play with it. Um, this is definitely because it has a bit of a darker base. You can use it on the lower lash line, I find, but then you just get darkness and you lose some of the pretty shimmers it has. So for me, it just confirmed why I haven't bought any other shades from JD Glow since purchasing this. I'm very happy with having this one. I mean, I, I will definitely go back to it at some point. It's a stunning shade, but the pans are just really big and I just, I don't, love the formula as much as I do some of my other multi-chromes that are also in this palette. What is also in this palette? We have four shades from Clehona, and what I put in is Gloaming, Lux, um, Opulence, and Grisail. Those are the four shades that I ended up going for, and I loved every single one of these. There was just one shade, let me start off with this one then, Grisail, that uh, in my brain, it looked differently than when I started using it on my lids. 
And this is something I have found happens to me with so many multi-chromes where you swatch it and it looks beautiful and then you apply it with a brush and then it just doesn't look the same, I feel. Um, Grizzale, I'm not sure if you can see it here, hopefully in the close-up you can see it, but it has a very pinkish, reddish, burgundy base. And I felt that at first it really showed up as a burgundy and especially when I applied it to my eyes, I was like, ugh, is that really pretty? So what I ended up doing is that I put gloaming over it. And then I felt it looked a lot prettier in real life. On camera, the look looked a lot better, I felt, than what it looked like in real life. I'm not gonna lie. So for me, Grizzale was that shade that so many people raved about. But for me, because it has that burgundy sort of base, it kind of, if you, if you look the wrong way, it kind of looks like you've got pink eye. So for me, I really loved it, especially when I topped something else over it. I really felt it transformed and that burgundy sort of ness that I had was definitely canceled out. So I loved it for that. It was still a very pretty look that I did for sure. But now I feel like Grizzale isn't necessarily my favorite Cleona multi-chrome for sure. Opulence is more of a taupey base, so that I felt was a lot more successful, but that looked very sort of, I don't know, a little lackluster by itself as well, so I actually topped it off with Lux, which is right here, and that has a very strong yellow toned flip, but I felt that the combination of the two really made it, like just lifted it up and just made it something very, very special. Um, so yeah, and I also believe that when I use this one, I also top Lux over Unexpected, by the way. So yeah, these two I, I kind of use as toppers, really, and inner corner highlights. Um, but yeah, Opulence was a great base. It worked really well on the lower lash line too, because again, it has a little bit more of a base color to it, and it was very, very stunning. It's just a little more green tone than I had expected from swatching it. It's not as neutral as I thought it was going to be. And then Gloaming is mind blown. Like this is the kind of thing where you're like, yes, multi-chromes. This can also work really well. I didn't wear it like that, but if you were to put corduroy all over the lid and then use gloaming on top, you get a really stunning transformative, transformative shade. Th these two shades can definitely not only be topped over other multi-chromes like I did in the looks I showed you today, but you can also top them over mattes and just really give that matte a completely different dimension to it. I think that especially Gloaming is a shade that if you were to put it over a navy or a black or possibly even like a really deep purple, that it can look really, really stunning topped over other things for sure. So yeah, Gloaming, great shade. Lux, again, I liked it, but it was far more yellow toned than I had expected it. So I put, put this in my inner corner because in the pan, it looks like it's got a greenish blue sort of quality, but when I put it in the inner corner, it looked like boom, yellow. And I was like, oh, uh, that's a bit too much. So I definitely like use my pinky to really sort of tap it in and take away half of what I had applied because it was very intense at first. And once I had toned it down and I had also topped it over opulence, I felt it was more like unified with the rest of the shadow. And that's one of the issues that I have with multi-chromes is because they have these flips and I have quite a curve to my lid. So there, I feel there's just a really big difference between what the shadow looks like in like a flat surface swatch like the back of your hand, because this is a flat surface. But then I put it on my rounded lid and then the shadow just looks completely different. And I feel therefore that multi-chromes can be a little bit difficult to work with because it's like, it's a bit like Forrest Gump said, life is like a box of sh chocolates, you never know what you're gonna get. Well, I feel that way about multi-chromes. You can apply them, you can look at them in the pan, you think, oh, it's got these shifts, you apply it to the back of your hand, like, oh, it's got these shifts, and then you apply it to your eye and it looks completely different. So they're very confusing to me. <laughs> And I've had this experience with a lot of multi-chromes and that's why I'm not currently really looking to try any more multi-chrome shades um, because it's just, they're just really difficult to work with and I feel that unless you go with it like a setup like this where you use a very basic neutral in the crease and then a multi-chrome all over the lid, there really is not a lot of use for them. 
I hope to go back to some of my muzzlechromes over the fall time though, because I love putting some of the more intense multi-chromes that have a deeper base with some of the grungy neutrals that I like to wear in the, in the fall time for sure. So I definitely want to sort of play around with that and show you those examples in the, in the fall time. So I know I can use multi-chromes in different ways, you know, like pairing them with different mats, but you know, multi-chromes together, like in this case, because I have these like iridescent toppers to go with it, it worked out quite well, but they just don't really come together into cohesive looks for me all that easily. I'm not sure if that makes sense. So yeah, now we're gonna go down to the floor and I'm going to be selecting my new palette for the month of July. So I hope you'd like to join me for that. Okay, so time to put a new palette together. And I actually think I wanna start using this for this round. So this is going to fit a little bit more. This is a nine pan palette. Um, but first I need to put these uh, shadows back into its place. So let me do that first. So what I want to do with this today is that I want to put some fun colors together for the summertime. So, so I do want to pick another one of my uh, multi-chromes to go in here. Um, so I want to, I think, um, select this one. I'm not sure which it is, but it looks like a fun, like, more like warmer toned one. And I don't have a lot of warm tones. I think it's called Bloodline. Let me check. I was wrong, this is called Vermilion, but I do still want to put it in here. I'm going to be swatching these for you next time for sure. Now, I also love teals in the summertime, so I'm thinking these two MAC shades, possibly, but I also have some in here from Sydney Grace and Nabla. So I think, let me put these together to see like, oh, they're very close. So maybe go a little bit of both ways. So I'm going to put in the MAC. So I believe this is, I think this is Steamy. No, it's Houdini for Makeup, makeup Geek. I thought it was a MAC shade. It's not. It's Houdini for Makeup, makeup Geek. And I want to put in this mat. So my battery died. I do apologize, but I was saying that this is Sydney Grace's Thrilled, and this is the one I want to select. I also put this in my... Um, if I were to make a custom palette video. Now, I love me some warm tones in the summertime, so I wanna check some water, uh, warm tones to put in here, but the only warm tones I really have, I think are in my MAC palette, MAC Makeup Geek palette, and this ColourPop one. And everything I have is quite cool toned. Let me check my Lethal Cosmetics, um, because I don't have that many warm tones in my singles collection because I, it's just not something I wear a lot. So everything I have is cool toned or shimmery or something like that. So let me see, what else do we have here? So I don't have a lot of like very, very warm tone things in here now that I look at it. So this is the ColourPop one that has some warm tones. So it's mainly these like mustardy shades. I do have Makeup Geek's Chickadee over here, which is a good one. And I don't know what this is anymore. Is this Espresso? Oh, this is Embark. So that's a good MAC shade for like a dark brown. That can like tie the looks together. Then maybe this from ColourPop. This is Made to Last. Which I think can be a nice like neutrally crease shade. Hmm. Yeah, and then we're going Flamethrower from Makeup Geek this shade, which I think is a stunning warm tone, and it's the warmest shade I have in any of my palettes. So I think I need that, and then I think I wanna do this one. This is Paper Tiger, yes. This is ColourPop's Paper Tiger for like that mustardy vibe. And then I do have this Army Green shade. Uh, this is what you get if you know what you love. <laughs> you end up with uh, a lot of things. Well, it's not all very similar. What do I have here? Some brighter blues and greens and some purples from ColourPop. Maybe this. I do really like the look of that. That's a nice neutral, I think. So this is Mr. Sandman, which I believe was in the 
It's My Pleasure palette, so that can be like a nice like shade. It's going to be quite a grungy palette, I now see. I'm putting it all together, but this is what I kind of like in the summertime. And maybe like a brighter shade. This, this is an option, but I think that in my blue-green palette, I may have something similar. So this is Steamy from MAC, so that's an option. But I have some similar shades in here, too. So let me push this forward. And I know that these are slightly better quality, I'm not going to lie. Is this? What is this? Oh, this is Venice from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I think that... It's going to be a nine pan that I can get down with. So, we've got a very different color story this week, my this month, my friends. But we are going to be playing around with these nine pans. I'm excited. So we have the teals, some neutrals, and then some really nice warmth here. So, you know, if you just use these three shades and then either use that as an accent or this, this can be a fun like inner cor corner or halo eye with the teal. So I think I've got quite a few options here to play around with. What do you guys think? Let me know in a comment down below what palette you would build. But I think this is a color story that I can get down with and I'm super excited to be using it this month. Thank you so very much for joining me today. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos a week and I hope you'd like to stay tuned for more and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.